chemistry tales. This is tale one on acid base equilibria and our next story is track six which is buffer solutions and so to help us here today we have Miss Annie she's gonna get a little treat for participating and helping us um, focus on why buffers might be important to animals and humans and so to answer that question um, maybe we should think about the blood that's in all of our living systems and how critical it is that the blood that we have maintains a pH of around 7.4 and if anything should disturb that equilibrium and that pH um, we get sick and dogs get sick so anytime there's a uh, disruption to the um, pH of many of our cellular fluids, including our blood, um, we get sick. So it's critical that there are components in our blood that help maintain the pH uh, where it's supposed to be, which is around 7.4. So maybe we'll spend a few minutes um, defining what a buffer is, how it works, and looking at a problem. So Annie seems a little tired today, so we'll let her rest while we work. Okay, so we are on E in our notes on acid base equilibria. Once again, this is our sixth example of a type of solution, and this time it's a buffer solution. As I mentioned, we approach pH calculations differently depending on the type of solution that we're dealing with. Okay, so um, start with basics, definition. What is a buffer? So, what is a buffer? Well, a buffer solution is one in which it has a capacity to, and here comes the big word, resist changes in pH. Okay, once again, your blood to be healthy, your, the pH of your blood's got to be around 7.4, and if it's not, um, you become very ill. Okay, so there's components in all of your cellular fluids, etc., and intra and extracellular fluids um, in which pH is critical. And so there's natural buffers in most living systems. Okay, so that's the simple definition of what a buffer is. So now let's think chemically and the kinds of substances that are going to help us form a buffer solution that resist pH changes. Okay, so where we want to start is um, considering what type of buffers exist. What kind of substances, when we put them together, are going to have the ability to resist a pH change? So there's basically two kinds, starting with weak acid buffer, okay, and not only do we need the chemical substance that's a weak acid, but we need a salt of the weak acid, which basically contains the conjugate base. Okay, for example, oh, maybe acetic acid that's one of our weak ones. And then a salt would be a soluble salt. So the conjugate base of acetic acid is the acetate ion. So a soluble um, cation with the um, acetate ion may be potassium. So remember in aqueous solution, this actually breaks up into potassium ions and the acetate ion. So a buffer could exist in which we place a weak acid in the presence of a salt of the weak acid. And how does it work? So let's just go back to the equilibrium for our weak acid. Acetic acid okay, in aqueous solution In aqueous solution, a weak acid will partially give one of its hydrogen ions to the water molecule, forming the hydronium ion. 
and the conjugate base of the acid. So that's the acetate ion. Okay, so if we have a buffer that is a weak acid in the presence of a salt of the weak acid, we have a large concentration of the weak acid, and we also start with a large concentration, a large quantity of the conjugate base of the weak acid. Okay? So they're sitting here, and we're in equilibrium. So if anything happens to our system in which we add an acid or a base, okay, think about this. If you add a small amount of acid or base to a buffer, okay, there should be little to no change in the pH, right? That's the whole point of the buffer is to resist pH changes. Okay, so how does this equilibrium work? Well, let's think about, so if you add an acid, you would increase the concentration of the hydronium ion. Doesn't matter what kind of acid it is, okay? So now we're going to do Le Chatelier's principle. So all of a sudden, if there is an increase in the concentration of the hydronium ion felt in the solution, it's going to shift to the side to get rid of that increase. So in the process of shifting this way, we are going to wipe out any added acid. We will consume some of the conjugate base. is going to decrease, and then we're going to form more weak acid and water. So we will increase a little bit the amount of the weak acid. Okay? All right. So the equilibrium shifts. We have a little less of this. We have a little more of that. But the net effect on the hydronium ion, it increased real quick, but then we shifted and we, we used it up. So there was literally very little change in pH. And that's how a buffer works. It's that simple. Okay, so before we can move on, we need to clear the board. And I'm going to ask Annie for a little help because poodle paws have powers. Clear the board, Annie. The board's clean. Thank you, Annie. Should we talk about weak base buffers now? All right, we'll do that. Good girl. Okay, second kind of buffer system that can be created is when we have a weak base in the presence of a salt of the weak base. Okay, example, so remember ammonia was one of our weak bases. And so a salt would be something like the conjugate acid of the weak base is the ammonium ion. So something like a soluble salt, like ammonium chloride. So technically, the, this is a soluble salt. So it's ammonium ion and chloride ion. And remember, if this is the weak base and I add a hydrogen ion, this is the conjugate acid. Okay, so there's the second type of buffer that can exist, it, a weak base and the salt of the weak base. Um, and so it works in a similar fashion. In general, um, ammonia is a weak base in the solution. By definition, in aqueous solutions where water is our solvent, okay, the base is going to be in equilibrium with its conjugate acid, that is the ammonium ion, once it accepts the hydrogen ion from water, okay? And then we are going to get what remains off of the water molecule, so if you pull hydrogen ion away, you're left with the hydroxide ion. And this is the base ionization equation for the weak base ammonia. What's different about a buffer 
we have a large concentration of the ammonia and we also have a large concentration of the ammonium ion. So they are sitting here just ready to shift to one side or the other if ever we have a disturbance in the hydronium ion concentration or the hydroxide ion concentration and remember these two respond to each other so if I were to increase the hydronium ion concentration of my solution by adding an acid okay that would in effect decrease the hydroxide ion concentration so here's an equilibrium Le Chatelier's principle tells me if I feel a decrease in this species concentration, my equilibrium is going to shift in the direction to replace the lost hydroxide ion. If that happens, I'll decrease a little bit of the ammonia. I will increase a little bit of the ammonium ion. Whatever loss of the hydroxide ion will be replaced, so the net change to the concentration of the hydroxide ion is going to be essentially zero. And that's how a weak base buffer works. So thank you. And now we're going to do a pH calculation for one of our buffer systems. Okay, so now we're ready to work a problem involving a weak acid buffer. And Annie's going to help us, so I'm going to give her a little encouragement to stay awake this time. Hopefully she will. Um, and Annie, which, um, which acid system should we do? Should we do acetic acid? That's one of our favorites. We've looked at that one in the past. So let us predict, if you will, what is the pH for a solution that contains acetic acid at 0 0.250 molar and let's do sodium acetate at a concentration of 0 0.150 molar. Okay, so simple pH calculation. This time we're dealing with the buffer, it's just not the weak acid. But you want to know something? We still have the equilibrium involving the weak acid in the presence of water or solvent yielding the hydronium ion and the conjugate base, the acetate ion. Okay, so this equilibrium exists as does that of uh, the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. And remember this equilibrium has the acid ionization constant affiliated with it for the concentration of the hydronium ion and the acetate ion. Product in the numerator and we have the concentration of the acetic acid in the denominator. Okay. For a known acid, we can always find the Ka value. This one is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, so this equilibrium is always going to exist even if we've got relatively large concentrations of the acetic acid and the conjugate base, the acetate ion. So we can take this equation and we could do a derivation where we solve, rearrange, and get an expression for the hydronium ion, okay? And then take the negative log of both sides of the equation, okay? I'm not gonna go through the derivation, but I'm gonna give you the end result. So if we had gone through that with this particular equation, we would have left, been left with the following. The pH of our solution is equal to the pKa of the acetic acid plus log base 10 of the concentration of the acetate ion 
all over the concentration of the acetic acid. Okay, this equation is what is known as the henderson hasselbalch equation. Giving everybody credit for, sorry. Okay, so the pH of any buffer solution is going to equal the pKa of the acid form plus log base 10. In this particular case, it's acetate ion over acetic acid. We can actually write this equation even more general, and it would apply to weak base buffers as well. And that would be pH equals pKa of the acid form plus log base 10. Okay, more generally, concentration of the base over the concentration of the conjugate acid. This equation applies to either weak acid or weak base buffers. That's pretty helpful. Very helpful. Not as helpful as any, but pretty helpful. All right, let's clear the board and get on with the calculation. Poodle Let's clear the board and continue with our calculation of the pH of this buffer system. And Annie, give me a little magic. Poodle paw power. Okay, welcome back. So let's finish solving our problem. Annie's going to get a little encouragement to stay awake. If she can stay awake, hopefully you can too. All right. So, a buffer that contains acetic acid that's 0.2 molar and the salt, sodium acetate, at 0.15 molar. And we learned the henderson hasselbalch equation is perfect for predicting the pH of a buffer. So, pH equals the pKa of the acid plus the log Okay, now we need to just think. So the numerator is the concentration of the conjugate base. So that is the acetate ion. So it's the concentration of the acetate ion all over the concentration of the conjugate acid. In this case, it's the acetic acid. All right. So now it's a matter of putting data into the equation. So pKa, this is the negative log of the Ka value for the acid. Okay, we did say previously the Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Putting that in right here. Plus log base 10. Okay, and now we're going to have in the numerator the concentration of the acetate ion. The acetate ion comes from the sodium salt. That's a soluble salt. So if this salt starts out at 0.15 molar, it completely dissociates into the sodium ion and the acetate ion. And the molarity is equal because one mole of this gives us one mole of sodium and one mole of the acetate ion. Therefore, our concentration of the, sorry about that, concentration of our acetate ion is going to be that of the sodium acetate, 0.15 molar, okay? And the concentration of the acid we say is 0.25 molar. And it's that simple. So carrying out the calculation, the negative log of this first term is going to give us a value of 4.745. Two significant figures here means two decimal places here. And then we take the log of that ratio. It's going to give us a negative number. It's going to be a 0.2219. Okay, and this is going to be our elastic fig here. The sum of those two things is going to give us a value a little less than 4.7. So it's going to be 4.523. Three, that being our last significant digit, so we're going to report this as 4.52. That is the pH of our buffer. 
of acetic acid, a weak acid, with its conjugate base coming from the sodium salt. Okay, so choosing a buffer system is important. And so obviously the Ka kind of gets us in the ballpark of the pH where the buffering capacity is going to occur. And we tweak the pH that we need our buffer to work at by the ratio of these two species concentrations. This helps us tweak the pH where buffering occurs. So that's a pretty slick way of being able to manage big changes in pH to a solution um, by having uh, different proportions of our weak acid and the salt of the weak acid. And a very similar thing can happen with a weak base buffer as well. So thank you for listening and this is how you approach pH calculations for a weak acid buffer system. And the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, once again, is applicable to either weak acid or weak base buffers. Thank you for listening. Andy would also like to let you know we appreciate your attention and power to the Poodle Pot.